What is good, Rangers fans? Randy here, back for the GBA D League semifinals team builder. And I just want to say before we jump into this, I want to thank everybody for all the support on last week's uh, battle and all all season because this is potentially the final team builder, potentially the final video of the GBA D League season three for me. I'll have a recap video, I think. Um, I mean, it will be a recap video of the GBI D League, but it'll be kind of like an update video for, um, and I highly, highly recommend you guys watch it. It's going to be talking about the future of the channel. It'll be under 10 minutes, I hope, um, after the GBA. Um, you know, I do have two leagues I'm going to join for the Ultra Sun and Moon launch, so you guys should be, if you guys want to see, you know, where this, where the draft league takes me, my draft future takes me, you know, my, uh, my career, you guys should follow along. It's going to be a lot of fun, uh, so... Hopefully I can, you know, improve the quality of my videos as well. If you guys, you know, think I should take it up a notch or two. But I do appreciate everybody. You know, everybody's helped me out. Uh, Lindo Mar, Aaron Barden, uh, Newcomer, Youngster Bill, my front office guys. You guys are awesome. I'll link all of them in the description. Uh, Youngster Bill and Aaron have no presence online, but Lindo Mar has a YouTube channel. Really good league battler himself. Great builder. You guys should check him out. He's probably, uh, you know, you guys should check him out. You know, I, I highly recommend it. So, um, anyways, uh, yeah, this is the GBA D League semifinal team builder against for Jolt. Jolt, unfortunately for us, uh, clinched the number one seed last week, um, thanks to a loss by Leo and a big win by him. Um, so you know, it, it's it's it is what it is. Obviously, Jolt's a threat. Obviously, we'll have to beat him um, to have a chance at the final. So you know, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, I just wanted to shot the tournament, so we'll see what happens here. Um, this is going to be the most most important team builder because this plan highly highly rec you know falls on me you know executing and I can't if I can't execute then I won't win the game plain and simple this team here is crazy I'll tell you guys right now it is crazy the success rate is going to be as followed either it's going to be really good or really bad and I really do mean that because it's it just relies on me hopefully you know just beating them down with offense so and that's the plan so. Anyways, we have LeBron James leading the way. Uh, oh, you guys should check out Jolt, by the way. You know, we're facing Jolt, coach of the Toronto Raptors, in round one of the semifinals. The four seed versus the one seed. The winner goes to the championship game, and the winner of that game, of course, is quote unquote guaranteed a spot in the GBA season eight. So uh, that's huge stakes on the line here. Hopefully, we can pull off the upset. And before we go into the builder, of course, like I said, Lindo Mars, uh, YouTube will be in the description below. Aaron Barden is a crazy guy that comments on all the videos and the GBA server. A little crazy. Just, uh, he's a nice guy, so take it easy on him. And then Youngster Bill, he's cool now. He's uh, joined my front office. Really great guy. Really smart guy, too. Um, and then shout out to uh, two guys, um, two people that I had mocks, or I had, uh, I, I messaged you guys on Discord. You guys know who you are. Um, I don't want to say their names because, you know, I feel like I don't want Joel to think they're out to get him, so... Because um, they really want me to, you know, have a shot against Jolt. So, um, you guys know who you are. So, I do appreciate it. Actually, it's three people. Three people, yeah. But one of them is like more involved in my circle. The other two are, uh, you may have been, you know, we, we've, you know, we don't, you, you, know, you guys know who you are. You're, you're, you're good. So, anyways, LeBron James is leading off this week. Uh, he actually hasn't gotten a single kill all season, which, which is funny. He's 0 4, I believe. But he's done a good, got you know, a damn good job of getting up rocks. So that's all I needed to do here. It is imperative that we get up rocks for um, the rest of my month on the squad because it, it could be very, um, you know, huge to get those rolls, those kills. I need to get on stuff like Mew and Needle Queen. So obviously, there's no way he can really stop me from getting up rocks. Um, offense, I mean, like offensively, he can't kill me in one shot. Um, he would have to be running Taunt on something like a Tornadus T or an Mew and be faster than me. Obviously, Tornadus, but um, I doubt he will lead Torn because he knows I love to lead Tapu Koko. So. And I doubt Mega Hangus Khan will be offensive. And if it is, well, F me. I don't have a switch in. But anyways, so again, you know, this 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 uh, spread here allows me to live a life for Hurricane from Torn. Um, I have enough speed to outrun max speed Rotom Heat. Um, actually, no, that's incorrect. That's way off. I believe it's enough speed to outrun... Um, the um, the heat spread he ran last time, which was enough to outrun uh, Jolly Scizor. I, I forget what it, the the spread was. I, I can't remember. Um, it may just be Needle Queen, honestly. I just can't remember off the top of my head. I actually get his Needle Queen. Um, cause I know Rotom Heat's faster. We know Rotom's faster than I mean, Needle King by one point. So, um, but anyways, uh, <laughs> the speed's there. It's important. I know, I know it's four. I just can't remember what it is. So it, it's good. Uh, don't roast me. But anyways, so. 
course, I have the dual stab, which hits everything. Uh, Shadow Ball hits the Mew for more damage because, you know, Mew's a problem uh, for the team. And he saw that last time. Nino King is actually a really good mod offensively against them, so he can't just switch into onto this thing, like, brainlessly. He needs to, you know, be careful with this because it's a decent wall breaker against his team. So, yeah, nothing else to say. Just get up rocks and deal damage. Um, again, it's not one of those games to where I expect him to live long. I just need him to lead, get the rocks up, and start chipping away at his team. So, next up, we have Ray the Hydreigon. After a pretty solid performance last week, uh, we're bringing a sub-toxic set. Now, this set, I really should have brought it last time we faced because it's so good. Um, it's able to get toxic off on Mega Kangaskhan and Torn, which are likely switch into this thing. Switch into this thing, I should say. Um, Dark Pulse and Earth Power are pretty spammable. Dark Pulse is pretty spammable because his only Dark Resists are Cobalion, Zoroark, and Diancie. And I only expect Cobalion to come maybe Diancie, but more likely Cobalion again because Cobalion can actually threaten me offensively afterwards. Diancie could too, but um, uh, it's a very good possibility I will be running Steel Stab to deal that with that thing. But Earth Power is safer to hit Cobalion. It hits Diancie too, so I can actually... Uh, you know, maybe potentially put it in range after rocks, dark pulse, earth powers, maybe. You know, we'll know. We'll see about that. Um, but sub toxic is really good here because I can sub up on Sides with Toad and Rotom Heat, which is really good. I can even probably sub up on Torn T if he's gonna try to U-turn out of there. So that's really good for me. Um Toxic is like I said, is very good for Kangaskhan, Toad, Torn T, even the Mew if I want to go for Toxic on Mew, if I want to be crazy as opposed to clicking Dark Pulse, but um but Dark Pulse obviously would be nice to hit Mew in case he's running Culver Berry. But last time he didn't, so that's something to note. Um, but yeah, I mean, this set's really good. I can Toxic even uh, the Rotom Heat, because uh, Rotom Heat last time toxic me. But this time I can sub up on that thing, and then from there he can't break my sub. Unless he wants to run, like, HP Ice to break my sub or something. But um, he loves his status. I'm sure he'll be running Dual Stab. He has to run Dual Stab. He has to. And then maybe Toxic and Wisp, or maybe just Toxic and Pain Split. So we'll see what he opts to run there. Um, but sub, of course, is really good this matchup. So hopefully Ray can uh, do some more work with sub and stuff like that. And just, you know, being a bit of a threat to his team. Got to play it smart. I can't let it go down early like I did last time. If I have to, uh, I do. Like, there's a, you know, there is a scenario to where I, I let this thing go down early. It's fine because, you know, the rest, the rest of the team will be very capable of winning the game, you know, for, for themselves. So next up is the beginning of the chaos, the beginning of the uh, the madness of this team. The team that gives me the best chance to throw off jolt and overall help me you know pull the upset so we have scarf jellicent kevin it's gonna be a female jellicent keep that in mind gonna be pink nice and pink um so yeah i mean it's spammable water spout is completely spammable against his team he only has two resists uh one of them is an immunity being the size of toad um gorgeist is the resist but I don't expect Gorgeist to come if it does. I mean, it's just Halucha meat and Hydreigon meat and uh, Needle King meat, so I don't mind that. Um, so, again, this mod is spammable. After Rocks, it two shots everything on his team. Everything, except like max special defense Kangaskhan, which is what he almost brought last time. Like, pretty much close to what he brought last time. Um, and even then, like, uh, it's still able to do a lot of damage because uh, it's going to put him in range of another one afterwards and he can't wish wish stall that because he didn't bring protect and I doubt he'll be able to do it because Water Spout, again, it's a two shot on everything. So that's good. Um, Hydro Pump is spammable in case I get damage. Shadow Ball, of course, is to be able to hit Mew um, and the, uh, the the Gorgeist. Not the Gorgeist. Yes, the Gorgeist. And then, of course, Energy Ball is for the side of the Toad in case he does bring it. So um, Trick wasn't that useful here because I really don't want to give anything a choice scarf. Not Mew, not Queen. Not even Rotom, so I mean, I'd rather just, you know, just uh, have uh, coverage everywhere. And then I did opt to bring Cursed Body in case I want to disable a move like uh, Nano Queen's Thunderbolt, or maybe even Grass Knot from the uh, Torn, or maybe even Hurricane if you opt to do that, or Knock Off or something. You know, it's it, it'll be, it, it could be clutch, hopefully. I just don't think Water Absorb's worth it, especially since uh, Side of Toad isn't really a threat. Side of Toad really actually helps my team, especially for Nino King and my Hydreigon. So, uh, so I don't mind that. But, with that being said, uh, Jellicent is going to be doing one of two things. Either it's going to be doing some um, early game um, chip, early game breaking, or it's going to be doing some late game cleaning. I doubt I'll ever sack it at any point, especially if there's no water resist on his team. So, that's good. I actually did consider um, an offensive Jellicent last time, but I really didn't want to, did not want to get risk getting swept by the Scullypede. But, um... You know, uh, anyways, I don't think he'll bring Scully Pete. If he does, I actually might lose to it, to be honest. <laughs> Just looking at my team comp. But 
Next up, we have the Tapu Koko Shaka Zulu taking the support role this week. Uh, pretty much the key player and all this this craziness. Um, it's not the most important key, but it's you know it opens the doors. It's the key, and the next mod coming in is going to be the you know he's gonna be the one that takes charge. So Tapu Koko, all it needs to do is get in on something like Rotom, the Torn. Excuse me. Um, even the Toad works too. Hell, even Queen, depending on what kind of set he runs this time. Um, but it can come in on most things and get up a screen, be able to deal with that mon that you know, can normally deal with it and get up the end of the screen and then maybe hit it with the madness before it dies or switch it directly into the next mon. So, um, gonna have to play around it, gonna have to be a little while flexible with this Pokemon. And it's easy to do that with Coco, really good mon. It's gonna end up being the MVP of the season. It's got 21 kills for my team. 21 and 4, crazy, crazy stats. Um, crazy Pokemon. Um, and hopefully um, it doesn't have to do much kills here in this matchup. Hopefully all it has to do is just get the screens up and maybe click the th Thunderbolt once, maybe twice, Nature's Madness one time. So um, overall, I'm just I'm asking them to take a step back, be the support role this week because with screens and my next two mons, I don't think there's a way he can stop this. There's no way. He hasn't brought Defog most of the season. It's not really worth it for him because his team doesn't really mind it. He has a lot of resist being Cobalion, Toad. Needle Queen, and then his mons that are weak to it, like um, the Scullypede and Tornadus T, they don't really care because Scullypede usually just stays in any way, goes for an SD, gets up at speed boost, and starts sweeping. And then, of course, uh, Tornadus T gets a regenerator. The only mon that doesn't like it is the Rotom Heat. And last time he actually wanted it to work for him because he was going to run a he was running an Aya Papa berry, a 50% berry. And after Rocks and Interest Madness, it would proc it. So hopefully, he expects that again. And overall, like an Aya Papa Berry is really good for Rotom Heat. I don't see why he would even switch the item, to be honest. Maybe even maybe a Salt Vest, but and, 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 uh, for someone like Joel who likes status and wearing down teams, I feel like the 50% Berry is still good. I don't see why he would switch it. Maybe Citrus Berry, but besides that, I mean, I don't see why he would switch it, to be honest. You know, and Scarf doesn't make much too much sense. It, it could to be it could make sense, but um, it just helps Hydreigon and Mido King even more. So that's good. Uh, but next up, we have the next mon that we'll be taking. This is the mon that we're handing off the keys to. He's taking the baton, and he's going to try to lead the way with it. So we have Halucha Roberto coming in, making his 10th straight start along with Tapu Koko. And you guys can see that last move on the bottom. The dreaded move, those two words, man. Every OU player in uh, mi uh, middle 2017, uh, you hate that move right there. Baton pass. And... Uh, I'm relying on that move to win this game for me, guys. This move is going to rely on me. I'm relying on it to take me to the GBAD League Season 3 Championship matchup. And, again, I'll have my screens up. I'm either going to hard switch into Alucha, or I'm going to just let Coco die and bring it in afterwards. So, with the plus one defense stat, behind screens, near max special defense, max HP, Halucha will be nearly unkillable. It just won't be able to get killed that much. And the goal is to get up two Source Dance throughout any damage if he wisps me that's fine he status that's fine if he wears me down that's fine if he paralyzes me that's fine i hope not because in my, my luck i'll probably get paralyzed um but all i need halucha all i need is all i needed um roberto to do is take the hits if i get up two sword dances and i'm able to baton pass this game will be over 100 percent. there's no way he can win like impossible like i'm pretty damn sure um so by uh, you know at all costs um, I need two SDs to win. One, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take one, but two wins a game. Um, Halucha could probably do a little bit of work itself, but you know, ideally, I need to get this keep up the screens for um, to be able to let my next mod take a hit or two while it gets set up. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just needed to take hits. The the two stab moves, of course, are just filler. To be honest, um, it could be nice against Golipede if he brings it, or even the uh, the Gorgeist, But I mean, that's fine. I just yeah, I, I need to be able to do damage in case I can't baton pass immediately or don't want to or whatever. Um, but uh, if you can, in case you guys are wondering, baton pass. I can baton pass attack and defense. On burden actually isn't technically speed stage a uh, boost. They are just doubling my speed stats. So um, there's no boost from speed going into Meloetta at all. So it is legal uh, in case you guys didn't know. But most of you guys are smart anyway. So um, you guys know that. But I'm just letting you guys know in case some of you don't know. So the goal is to pass my plus one defense and my plus two, hopefully, the plus four attack into my final mod, which I am throwing all the marbles on. I am relying my season, resting my season in her hands she is going to hopefully carry me to the to the championship matchup and i very well think it can happen it's very possible and i am confident this will work out so the last mod on the team 
to face the MVP of this game, hopefully. Um, she is going to be the one taking the baton and taking the boost and going to go, you know, do some damage. Um, obviously, I'll be in my uh, base form before I'm able to be in this form. So when I baton pass into um, the Meloetta, ideally, the Mon on the field is going to be the, either the Rotom Heat, the Needle Queen, or the Mew. And all three of those I'm fine with because um, offensively, they can't touch me at all, especially with the defense boost and light screen up. I believe light screen would still be up for about a turn or two, a couple of turns depending on what happens. Um, with Tapu Koko, so we should be very, very good with that. Status isn't a big deal. In case he wants to predict me with another status uh, move, like Willow Whisper, Toxic, Lumberry will be there to help me out. I was originally running on Assault Vest, but um, in case something like Dianty does show up, Dianty actually does tank a plus two Drain Punch and then uh, Toxic Table to stall out and uh, take down Meloetta. And uh, it's good for me because in case he is faster, like a faster Mew and Willow Whisper to my Meloetta, um, I can uh, be, uh, let's say I'm in base form and Mew's in front of me. If he wants to Willow Whisper my base form because I'm slower, um, I'll be able to have Lumbear. I get my Relic Song off. And if I put him to sleep, that's great. Um, I don't have to worry about putting him to sleep if terrain's up. But if I do put him to sleep, Synchronize does not work with sleep. So I won't be in risk of me falling asleep as well. Um, so... Once I get the Relic Song off and I'm at plus two, I can just start hammering away. Nothing lives at uh, after rocks with a plus two Drain Punch or Return except a Max Defense Mew with Cobra Berry or a Near Max Needle Queen like he brought last time. But again, if I get to plus four, there is nothing he can do. The game would be over. He's not bringing Scarf Torn. Scolipede isn't a threat to me um, if he's running Speed Boost, which he will be if he brings it. It's not a threat to me offensively because I resist bug. Poison doesn't do that much to me when I have my uh, plus one defense boost. I have pretty decent base defense and HP. So, um, again, like he can't stop this. There's nothing he can do to stop Meloetta once it's set up. So, if I get to plus four, you guys should be celebrating in the comment section because I will have won the game like 100%. There, was be, there will be nothing he can do to stop it. Um, the only way he can stop it is with like Dragon Tail or uh, like Roar, but he would have to have do it on the Relic. He would have to do it on the Relic Song or do it on the Switch. So that's it, guys. That's the team, crazy team we have. The, the key players, uh, Shaka Zulu, Roberto, and Two Face. They're the ones that are going to make it happen. Meanwhile, LeBron, Ray, and Kevin are going to do all they can to either clean up after their damage or aftermath or get them, get them set up for that. So, of course, the goal, the plan is lead Nido King 100% of the time. You get up rocks, try to do some damage to him, get in position for Coco to come in on Torn or something. Um, and the same goes for Ray and Kevin. They're going to be there to either be early game cleaners or like wearing down his team or come in after the, the, the aftermath in case I'm not able to get up to plus four um, and just clean up afterwards. Again, Kevin is very capable of doing that if he doesn't bring um, you size of toad. So that's the plan, guys. I feel like the team is really well built. Again, shout out to my front office. Shout out to the guys I mocked with. Um, Everybody's been so supportive of me, hoping I can upset the beast, slay the beast. So uh, I wish Jolt luck, but uh, I, I would feel bad if I do upset him. But I'm sure he wouldn't, you know, he wants to earn his win. So um, so I'm sure he wouldn't, you know, mind losing to me if he were losing me. So hopefully we can pull out a win, guys. This video is either going to be um, in the same battle video or it's going to be up the next day. But I'll see you guys in the battle. And hopefully your Rangers can pull the upside of the ages and make it to the GBA D-League Season 3 world championship game yes i'm going to say world because we have australian and uh, other players from the uh, europe so i will catch you on uh either tomorrow or later in the video go rangers